from your from your phylogenetic analysis, which is very nice, is there some way to be predictive? Meaning, right now we're in a situation where we have to play whack-a-mole every 10 years where a new one's going to emerge. Is there some way we can look across the spectrum of the coronavirus and say, you know, these are the three or four that we should be looking for in the next few years? Now, I think the advent of synthetic biology or synthetic genome design actually may allow us to get to that question cheaply. So as the price of synthesizing virus genomes get down to about five cents a base, it's going to, you know, it's going to cost $1,500 to synthesize a coronavirus genome, which may scare that. I don't want to say, say scare the hell out of some of us, but it does allow us to ask those questions in a, an affordable manner. The other way to do it even more cheaply is to actually clone out the spike genes and make, uh, in essence, recombinants where you drop the spike gene of different bat coronaviruses that you think may have appropriate properties that could be emergent, pre-emergent strains and characterize their ability to replicate in human cells, both primary cells and whether other cells and cultures. So those, those types of questions are doable. The spike, even the spike genome, for example, is only uh, what, about 4 KB, so at 10 cents a base, it's a $400 experiment. You know, so. Now, it may be dual use Linda, experiments of um, concern. That's another issue. <laughs>